Good morning and a very warm welcome to our circuit Christmas service. It's great that you've been able to join us. Now, Dave Milner was originally going to be leading this time of worship and he was going to be doing it on Zoom. But as Dave's been unwell, we've decided instead to put this together on YouTube. But I hope in what we offer, you are able to worship in this amazing season. Emmanuel, God is with us. And what a great thing that is for us to celebrate today. A bit later on, we've got some carols lined up for you with a bit of a twist. We'll play some clips that we played at our PMC carol service on the 20th of December. James Tebbett, our district chair, will be leading us in a time of reflection and sharing some of his thoughts. And Sheila Mallinson from Cottage Wood Centre will be making some prayers of intercession. But for now, let us stop and pray and give thanks to God for his amazing gift. Let's pray. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all people. For unto us is born this day a saviour who is Christ the Lord. We come to praise, to bless, to glorify and to give thanks to you, O God, for your coming as Jesus, this greatest of gifts. We think of you coming as that little child at Bethlehem. You, O God, the almighty God, the creator of all things, the infinite being who is utterly beyond our most daring imaginations. You came to us as that little baby and you made your home with us. You came to reveal yourself to us and to reconcile us to your amazing love. You came to bring light to our darkness and hope to our hopelessness and love to our cold heartedness. So will you forgive us, God, for those times when we fail to live in the reality of your hope and your light and your love. Help us to be people whose lives declare the good news of great joy for all people. And today, right here, may Jesus among us be as real and as close and as warm as it was on that first Christmas. With Mary, may Christ be born in us. And with the shepherds, may we hear what heaven is saying to us and respond to your invitation to discover you for ourselves. And with those wise men, may we worship you and bring to you the offering of our hearts. Be glorified in us today, Lord. Amen.
a king God is with us even now his love is here Come and worship worship Christ the newborn king God is with us even Christmas is the present thing given out. I like presents and Christmas trees. What I love about Christmas is having family around and giving them presents. The best thing about Christmas is family. The best thing about Christmas is family. Um, what I really like about Christmas is when you get to wake up early, you're from presents and Christmas dinner was family. Well, I make it the morning, but, um, there's presents outside and, and I love them. What I like about Christmas is be, the family being all together. What I like about Christmas is the shining of the Christmas lights, to how the food tastes, to go into church and, and, and the songs. We don't like it! What I love about Christmas is waking up in the morning and seeing the presents on the sofa. I love opening presents and Christmas dinner. Opening presents and being very excited and having fun. Christmas cards! The wise men, <gasps> shepherd, sheep, Wizards! angels and presents. I like Christmas because I get to see my family and friends. I like Christmas because I get to see we're learning about the story of Jesus. At Christmas I like to learn to in the Christmas tree the decorations on the Christmas tree and having the presents. Merry Christmas everyone! Christmas means to me about peace and being happy. The birth of Jesus. What I what Christmas means to me is seeing the family. Christmas means to me excitement and spending time with family. Spending time with family and friends. Christmas is not just about presents, it's about giving presents. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Now in this same district, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch through the night over their flock. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news, news of great joy for the whole nation. Today there has been born to you in the city of David a Deliverer, the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
All at once there was with the angel a company of the heavenly host, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. After the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph with the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they related what they had been told about him, and all who heard were astonished at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered over them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for what they had heard and seen. It had all happened as they had been told. Oh, you are my joy. Hello, it's good be good to be with you today, and I hope that even in these challenging times, with your plans for Christmas perhaps disrupted or certainly limited, uh, something of the wonder uh, of this season has been reaching you and lifting you up. I chose for the reading the passage about the shepherds and the shepherds coming to the stable to the inn. Um, we often have that before and not after Christmas. We often move on to the wise men. But what struck me was how the shepherds in their experience of uh, of being marginalised and isolated, uh, of dwelling literally that night in darkness, but perhaps more metaphorically in darkness, um, and certainly also full of fear, at least when the angels appeared. That resonates with us in our experience of the pandemic, when we are, feel isolated when there's a great gloom and darkness, uh, when we're also afraid in various ways. Uh, and all of us have been affected, perhaps more than we realised. Inability to travel, not able to go to work, stuck at home, 
having to shield, aware of being confined to bodies that are frail if we've caught the illness or our fear of catching it, uh, constrained, not able to do as much as we would want to uh, in terms of reaching out for others to be with them, to care for them, to help them in all sorts of ways. This is true for all of us. And then, of course, we all then go on to say, of course, it's been worse for um, that is often the case without then invalidating our own challenges and our own experience of these times. But, for example, I heard from a colleague chair whose district links with, a, with the churches in North India and of his opposite number there describing how difficult it is because of the economy and the context where so many people literally live day by day. So go out to earn a day's wage and with that they buy for the food on the table that night. And with things shutting down and with them supposed to stay at home, they have no money and no food and thus have to go out to get something to eat, which means, of course, they're not distancing and at danger of catching or passing on the virus. A terrible confluence of challenging situations that puts many of ours uh, into, in, into the shade. But because many of us thankfully still have a roof over our heads or food on our table but we recognize that that is not so for some even in these challenging times and situations so the pandemic and whether we have a mild affliction of it or a terrible affliction of it um, affects us all and yet good news was announced to those shepherds and then when i thought about it some more and thought about that lovely verse one of the loveliest in the bible where mary treasures up these things and ponders them in her heart and when i pondered it i realized of course that jesus himself um, i was reminded that jesus himself identifies with us in our confinement Uh, there he was the lord of creation becoming incarnate being born amongst us into our own frail human body confined to major confined to swaddling bands that was the phrase that drew me uh, to to think about this theme how jesus was willing to be confined and constrained as we are at this time and we still wrap little newborn babies in swaddling bands or the equivalent i remember my Uh, daughter when she was first born being wrapped up in a little green blanket in the hospital to keep her warm but also of course to uh, mimic to resonate uh, with that sense of being contained in the womb and the security of that being wrapped up with the little arms held in and that's great and that's lovely at the start but of course the child needs to grow we can't always confine them and we need to grow and expand in all sorts of ways and yet Jesus was willing to submit to that being swaddled and that wooden manger and all that was going to constrain him and confine him and ultimately being pinned to a prisoner's cross. Uh, And it reminds me of Graham Kendrick's phrase, hands that flung stars into space to cruel nails surrendered. This is what Jesus chose to do to share our experience. Or I think of Charles Wesley's hymn, 208 in Singing the Faith, if you want to look it up afterwards. We hardly ever sing it now. And yet it's it's so rich theologically in our understanding of what went on. Let earth and heaven combine. And a few lines on. Our God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man, confined, contracted to a span. He laid his glory by He wrapped him in our clay. Jesus choosing to become like us, sharing our experience, sharing our lot. Why? God with us, Emmanuel. God understanding, God knowing, helping us to understand that God understands. God knows what it is that we experience Jesus sharing our lot, our experience, sharing our life. But if that's the first point, secondly, but Jesus also does so in order to share his life with us, sharing his life with us by entering into our hearts that we can cope even with our confinement and that we can grow and expand 
incarnation, not just in Jesus of Nazareth way back then in one person at one moment of history, but for all times, for all peoples and for us by becoming incarnate through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ within our hearts, within our lives, dwelling within us, that we can expand, that we can grow in Christ's life. To illustrate, I remember that wonderful film, The Shawshank Redemption, which some of you may have seen. Wonderful film, but set in a terribly challenging, brutal context of a of a uh, of a corrupt and destructive prison where Andy, who is innocent, has nonetheless been uh, accused and now imprisoned and is doing his best to keep his integrity, not to succumb to the evil, but to ride above it and to subvert the prison in the process and to be a beacon of goodness for others too. And one of the things he does, because he's intelligent, he takes on the library, and which is paltry and has but a few poor books, and he persuades various outside departments and organisations to give to the library, and they soon have one of the best libraries and the whole penitentiary system and one day he receives a, a consignment not just of light of books but of records and he happens to be in the warden's office where he has some duties to perform and he takes one of the records a record of mozart opera arias some wonderful classical music and places it on the record player and switches the tannoy over so that the sound comes over to the prisoners exercising in the yard below and a wonderful angelic soprano sings a mozart aria and the men in their brutal imprisoned lives are transfixed and transformed and transported above the confines of their situation just for those few moments given a sense of something that is better something that's good something that is more wonderful and of course, the prison guards find out what's happening and come and Andy's locked the door to not let them in. And when they try to bash on the door to let him in, he simply turns the sound up some more so that the prisoners hear it for a few more minutes. And then, of course, they come through and they scratch off the record and take Andy to solitary confinement for a week or so. And when he comes out, his mate says, how did you cope being in solitary? He said, I had Mozart in here. He was listening to it in his head. We have Jesus in here. In our hearts that's what we can have to help us cope to expand our horizons to help us grow and i hope that whether it's through music or an inspirational experience or art or a beautiful view or nature or kindness given or received or relationship or something again that inspires that you also receive through these filters, through these media, through these moments, through these occasions, through these experiences, the gift of Christ's life, so that you recognise it for its goodness and are able to dwell upon it and allow it to dwell within you, allow Christ to dwell within you, that you will receive Christ's life. The God who shares our lot in incarnation, our suffering through crucifixion, his life, the God who shares his life with us in resurrection, sharing his life, enabling us to come through, to grow and expand. And if firstly, God shares our life in Christ, and if secondly, God shares his life through Christ for us, then thirdly, it enables us, of course, to share our life with one another and to receive one another's lives and to share our life back in turn with God, sharing of life together. Um, Fred Kahn will be a name I hope you know and recognise, the Dutch hymn writer who spent his last years in Glen Ridding and who's buried in St Patrick's in Patterdale. And he tells the story of how in the Second World War, when he was growing up with his family in occupied, in Nazi occupied Holland, tells the story of the terrible winter of 1944, uh, the Great Famine, when three of his grandparents died from starvation. And when it came to Christmas Day and, and all you could do to try to sell things to, to, to buy bread, you could sell a silver bracelet and all it would do would get you a slice of bread. Now, whether or not they did that, I don't know. But on Christmas Day 1944, all they had was one slice of bread for the two parents and the two boys. And a battle of generosity almost broke out between them. 
the two parents insisting as parents do that the children should have the food but the two boys worried at how terribly thin their parents were insisting the parents should have it until they realised that if they shared the bread they could each have a little bit resonant of course of our breaking the bread in communion and Christ sharing his life with us and tears ran down their faces for although they were still hungry and the context had not changed Nonetheless, they knew that they were cared for by each each other enough to give up the last piece of bread. They were loved by one another and it was that that helped them through. God helping us in Christ to share our life together, to share what we have with others. For all the continued selfishness of the world, the oppression and abuse in the world, that has been the odd sign of hope in these last months. May we grasp it and continue to live it and not forget it, that God's kingdom may come. And I've heard some wonderful illustrations in the district just before Christmas of Trinity and Barrow, um, not able to hold the Christingles for the local uh, primary schools, but packing up little Christingle parcels, the oranges and the candles and the sweets for the children with the message so they would still have a sense of God's life at this time. Or from Kirby Stephen of... Um, Christmas trees being given away or 200 food parcels being made ready for delivery through the food bank for those who are totally reliant in these difficult times upon upon the food bank and for the gifts that go through them. And you may have your own stories at this time. Uh, And may we continue to learn more and more what it means to share, even in our confinement and our constraints, recognising and remembering that God did not count the cost, but came amongst us to share our life, God with us, Emmanuel, in order to share God's life with us in all the ways that help and inspire and bring encouragement and care and inviting us, enabling us to share our life with others. May you, even in these challenging times, know the wonder and the spirit of Christmas, the hope, the peace, the love and the joy that we've been looking forward to through Advent. May you know it now and may it carry you into the new year with all its new challenges and its continuing challenges. May you know the peace of the Christ child in you. May you know the good news that was shared first with the shepherds, but which is as true and as applicable for us today and for all people as back then and as indeed as we know it will always be. God bless you. Amen. We come before God in prayer. We thank you for being a loving God and walking beside us every step we take. Things haven't been easy during this last year for many people. However, God, you have been there to support us all at all times. Even when we're busy and sometimes forget you, You are there, and your love is constant. We thank you for all the key workers in the NHS who have worked long hours to provide care for their patients, putting their own own health at risk. Those in the food chain who have provided food and goods we need in our daily lives. The scientists who have been working tirelessly to produce a vaccine that we've all been waiting and praying for. And and what emotions of relief they were showing when they were interviewed, when they achieved it. We thank you for them. We remember all that have been suffering with their health and mental health problems during this year. We pray that you will be with each and every one of them. We pray for our churches in our circuit and district, that we will all be able to return to our buildings in a much natural way. We thank you for the technology that has enabled us to still meet together. Also our ministers and lay preachers who have had to learn new ways of taking services which was alien to most of us before this year. We pray for our world, 
and the many challenges that face each and every one of us. Please help us to be better custodians of our world and be less wasteful. We pray for the countries that are now facing COVID, as well as famine and drought. Please be with the agencies who work to help to improve the conditions for them and all who support them in funding. Lastly, we pray for ourselves that you will enable us to share our stories with people and encourage them to know to know more about you. We will spend a few moments to bring our concerns and people who we know need our prayers. We ask this and through your wonderful name. Amen. Happy Christmas, everyone from Leah. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas from Nitro Coffee. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, Penrith from Tide Master. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Merry Christmas from Marsh Commercial. Merry Christmas to all. Very, Merry Christmas from Mr. Sims' little sweetie shop. Merry Christmas, Merry. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody in Penrith. Happy Christmas from all of us at Sands. Happy Christmas. Here's wishing everybody a happy Christmas from Fred Needle Corner. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas from the 4Fs. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Happy Christmas to one and all. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy, happy Christmas, Penrith. Just like to wish everyone in Penrith a big happy Christmas from us all at Skyline. Happy Christmas, Penrith. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas from Villa Bianca to all our customers and everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone! Happy Christmas, Penrith! Way! Merry Christmas, Penrith! It's a Merry Christmas from everybody at Poppins. Merry Christmas from all of us at Poppins. Have a safe, happy Christmas from Joseph Cowper. Happy Christmas from everybody at the Tourist Information Office. Happy uh, Christmas, uh, everyone from MNL. Merry Christmas, everyone! Happy Christmas, everybody! Happy Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas, everyone! Bonjour, bonjour, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! For everybody at Rutland for you, I'd just like to wish you all a very, merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year. Happy Christmas! Happy Christmas, Penrith! Happy Christmas to everyone in Penrith. From everyone at Penrith Lions Club. A very, very Christmas and a happy new year for all the staff, the volunteers, and the trustees of the Cumbria Family Support. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, Penrith, from the Cumbria University. A very, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy, happy Christmas, Penrith. Penrith. It's been great having your company with us today. Thank you for joining us in this time of worship. 
you know, we'll definitely look back, won't we, and say that 2020 was a really strange year. And who knows what next year is going to bring us. But we can be sure of this, that that God who came as Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, will journey with us and travel with us in whatever happens. And so in 2021, may you know God's peace. May you know God's hope. May you know God's joy. And may you know God's love. Can I wish you all a very happy Christmas for what remains of it and have a great 2021. Let us finish with one of my favourite blessings. Let's pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And now may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all, always. Amen.